if you've watched any previous action traction videos, you've probably seen that I've been working on the same project, which is take action. This project allows new contributors to assign themselves to issues within my projects. I now want to take time to share my three tips for be dugging. <laughs> be dugging. I said be dugging. I won't go into the details of how I built this action, but I will share that this is an action written in Bash. Uh, and the problem I'm having is when I run the action, nothing happens. So I wanna share how I debugged myself out of this problem, uh, sharing three tips on how to debug your actions. The first tip I'm gonna walk through is actually one of my favorite ways, and it's something I wasn't familiar with before, which is debugging with teammates. So I spend the most of my time developing on front ends, uh, running on hosted environments, and most of that doesn't actually require me to ever inspect those servers. Things actually just kind of just work, which is nice. But from my understanding, Teammate is a tool that provides an instant terminal sharing. You're able to activate a secure shell or SSH to navigate and run commands inside of different containers and, and VMs. So in my experience for debugging actions, having access to the production environment of the runners uh, for your workflows is pretty paramount and provides a way to inspect why your actions work locally, but not on the hosted runners, uh, which I'll talk about the actual solution I found later. So definitely uh, watch the end of the video and I'll show you what the actual solution is. But in order to leverage teammate, I use this GitHub action to activate the shell for debugging. I always keep a test repo on the ready to have a place to test my actions away from production because this is GitHub. You can use clone and fork repos for testing purposes. Uh, it's probably step zero for debugging, to be quite honest. So I've got an action here ready to debug. And if you choose not to create another repo or you have a reason not to, consider creating a branch for testing. That's all another thing you can do. So in order to solve this, I'm going to copy and paste directly from the marketplace listing. I'll add the teammate. And then finally, I'll go ahead and run the action. Now, I've already set up an issue. Uh, this action in particular runs by comments on issues. So I'm going to head and just type a comment here and hit submit. It looks like I have a failure, but after looking into it, it looks like I need to push the latest changes I staged for this video to my branch. So, so this brings me to <laughs> another, another tip. So I've, I've got three main tips, but I'm gonna have a lot of small little, I guess, Easter eggs here. Um, but the next little side tip is going to be the ability to actually re-trigger your actions using this dropdown. I, I can actually just hit the rerun and have this action run again. So just keep in mind if you're if you are messing with actions and trying to test them, uh, you can rerun the action. Now I can see my action has started and I can see my teammate session is running. Now teammate's gonna provide a URL in my logs. It does take a few seconds for teammate to provide the URL. So just give it a little time. Uh, I am going to navigate to this URL and show you my teammate session here. Uh, so here you can see I have a fully running environment for me to test out my GitHub action. So if I want to see the GitHub event path, I can see that here uh, just by echoing using some bash. I also have the ability to leverage JQ, which I, le I also mentioned in a previous video uh, to actually inspect that the contents of the JSON from that event path here. Uh, I could also see if I wanted to check out the GitHub actor to see who triggered the action, which was surprise. It was me. Uh, but one thing to note, this is a running developer environment. So knowing some basic command line Unix and, and bash, uh, is actually pretty useful. So how I recommend if you aren't familiar with any of that, uh, there are plenty of trainings here on YouTube that you can, you can check out to get up to speed. So I'm gonna head over to my VS code and open up this terminal and type in the SSH command that was also in my action logs. And you can see now, I can see all the same shell commands I just did previously in the browser and with all of my similar output as well. Uh, this is super helpful in sharing um, with teammates who want to leverage teammate uh, or even like the GitHub support team. Next time you're, you're stuck on uh, seeing some weirdness, consider opening a teammate session and sharing with friends to help you get unstuck. Just keep in mind a running session is using your action minutes. Also, it does have access to your GitHub tokens. Does, you don't have access to read your GitHub tokens, but it does have access to run with your GitHub tokens too as well. So don't just share with anybody, don't post this wild, wildly on the internet. So just to point out, this is really cool to dig in to see how action runners work. Um, so I've spent a lot of time in the environment to sort of figure out the ins and outs and what's available to me. So back in my teammate session, I do want to go ahead and cancel the workflow because remember, just keep in mind, a running teammate session inside of a GitHub action workflow is going to consume your minutes and you only have a limited amount of those available to you per your account. 
And I want to talk about ACT. And it's a local debugger, and it's a way for you to... So ACT actually allows you to run your GitHub actions locally, which also gives you the ability to run your GitHub actions like a makefile. So to start, you'll need to install this locally. Uh, there's some homebrew options as well as curl commands. Definitely check out the docs in the readme. And just by running ACT, once it's installed, running ACT-L, you'll see the list of the commands here. And then now you can see me running my GitHub actions locally as well. This is super helpful because now I can look at the logs locally and see if any sort of actions error out or provide messages to point me in the right direction to de debug my problem. So finally, the last tip I'm going to share is running your actions locally just as you would a Docker file. Now with ACT, you can only run GitHub actions on push and pull request events, uh, but my... In, but in my case, my action is actually running on issue comments. So in order to recreate that, I actually had to copy my environment files locally in an event.json file. Uh, this is giving me sort of the same environment that gives me that GitHub event path that I was playing around earlier. And just by running it locally, I can actually note that it does work. Um, so this was all done to find out that I just needed to change the bash type. And that's what solved my problem and is able to find that out just by running it locally uh, in, a, in a Docker file. If you learn anything, definitely hit the like and subscribe, and subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know what other tips and tricks you're looking for with GitHub Actions.